Thanks, Andy, but before we check the action, let's check the tracks. We start in Birmingham, move on to Norton Keynes, Milton Keynes, then two rounds at Nottingham, before we finish on Ponting's track in Morecambe. And the riders will be competing a series of motos and mains to score these points. The three mains will total 15 points for first, 12 points for second, and 10 points for third place, running down to five points for eighth place. Competing today, we have City Salisbury, very classy rider, but I think he's got the power to stop a man like Tim Marsh, who's been three times a number one British plate holder. Jamie Vince has been practicing hard in the States during the winter, and that will certainly have helped him. Mark White has also been around a long time in BMX, and he makes parts for bicycles. Tony Slater's come up from the southeast. He's been a number one plate holder, European champion in 82. Trevor Robinson, who rides for Halford, has had a number two plate in his time. The man who's had number three plate is Pete Middleton, a very strong, hard rider indeed. Bill Trevor is one of those dark horses. He's only just joined the pro ranks and may have difficulty making the final eight. John Higginson, also a very crafty rider, has a shop up at Morecambe. Alan Woods has been in the BMX business a long time. He started way back in 1980. John Lee's been around a long time too, switched from rally to talk of this year. And guest shooter was the MBMXA British champion last year, and the pros have got to watch out for him. And also this man too, Anthony Sewell, twice a number one plate holder pro champion in America. And here Andy Ruffles got a few scores to settle this year. He dropped to number two last year behind Tim Marsh and will be out to try and win this series. Scott Williams, another British champion who's come up into the pro ranks this year to challenge for the cash. And Richard Thorner, another man who will be trying hard to make the final eight. Jamie Vince, Scott Williams, Alan Woods, Tony Slater and Tim Marsh in the first moto with Tim Marsh on the right hand side of the gate. Extreme left to gate is Scott Williams, and these two are going to put the sandwich as they dive down that sharp left hand up. Oh, and he lost control completely this bike there. Tony Slater flew through the air, came down sideways, and it looks like Tim Marsh has also fallen that accident. There are only three left at the moment, and it's Jamie Vince sweeping around there. Got a sizable lead at the moment. Alan Woods in second place, Scott Williams is third. He's got plenty of time now, he's looked over his shoulder quickly, you can see that gap, and there are only three of them in it. They're going to collect one point for first, two for second, three for third, and so on. And it's the chap with the minimum points that goes through into the semi-final. Looking there, he knows he's got it. So that's Jamie Vince in first place. And nobody else in sight. Oh, there's Tony Slater. Now that looks like a stretcher case. He hasn't got up and the first eight people are with him. And that's the result then. First Jamie Vince, second Alan Woods, third Scott Williams, fourth up on the start line for Group B. We have Trevor Robinson, Andy Ruffle, Mark Salisbury, John Lee and John Higginson. And it's Andy on the right-hand side there flexing his arms and getting himself warm, and big Trevor Robinson alongside him. Over on the extreme left is the SE Racing City Salisbury then. And left at the start, that's John Higginson. He's way back in fifth place, and up at the front, it's Andy Ruffle powering away, hotly pursued by uh, Trevor Robinson, turning around that sharp bend. Up on the lip it goes, uh, oh, that looked to me that John Higginson's gone completely out of sight now. He nearly disappeared off the track, and the man at the front now is setting a very hot pace. That's Andy Ruffle putting a foot out, dabbing down, coming the finishing straight, over the last speed bump. Big Trevor Robinson's behind him, but Andy was unchallenged. And uh, there comes the official results with first place, Andy Ruffle. Trevor Robinson was in second place, John Lee took third. Mark Salisbury just managed to get home in fourth place with the poor John Higginson, fifth. We're now moving on to Group C, guest shooter. Neil Trevor, Mark White, Pete Middleton, Richard Thorner and Anthony Sewell. That's Pete Middleton on the right hand side, Mark White on the left. Richard Thorner in the CW colours of red and yellow and alongside him, guest shooter. And these two on the extreme left we have Anthony Sewell and alongside him, the man who's a bit of a dark horse in this one, Neil Trevor, taking to pro racing this season for the first time. What's he going to do as they come off the line? into that sharp left hand and Saul from the far side has made a very good start indeed but Middleton's headed him so these two lying first and second Middleton in front hotly pursued by Anthony Saul in third place is Mark White the rest of the pack are nowhere leaving these two going over those uh, double jumps together almost side by side but Middleton saw the chance there to keep uh, Saul in his wheel track he's still leading now but no Saul's come up on the inside Saul's putting the pad on they hit that last speed jump there shoulder to shoulder side by side it's Saul on the line he just managed to get half a bike length clear of Pete Middleton they really had a go those two 
So, the official result then. In first place, Anthony Saul by half a wheel from Pete Middleton, Richard Thorne a third, Mark White fourth, Guest Shooter fifth, Neil Trevor sixth. Tony, well, you're out of it with an accident. Perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about it. Well, I felt, in the first motor, I felt pretty confident on the start. I was in gate two, Tim was in gate one. I snapped out gate two, which I got in front of Tim. As I come into the turn, we sort of knocked a little bit and put me off the balance. And I landed into Jamie Vince, and I sort of went, fell back, landed on the back, and I've done my spine in. You know? The spinal injury, is that yeah, serious? Yeah, it's like coccyx, is it? Coccyx, yeah. Yeah, and a bomb. It's in pretty bad pain, so I thought better not ride. You know? How do you feel then? Will you be fit for the next round? Um, yeah, I'll be fit for the next round, definitely. Yeah, so it's, not, it's not that serious, just ruling you out of today? Nah, nah, it should be okay. It's only bruised, I think, but I'm going to have it checked out. Following the first three sets of motos, we move on to the riders who fought their way into the semi-final. Pete Middleton, Trevor Robinson, John Lee, Alan Woods, Anthony Sewell and Andy Ruffle. In the first to second semi is Jamie Vince, Mark Salisbury, Scott Williams, Tim Marsh, Guest Shooter and Richard Thorner. Of the six on the gate now and the six to follow, only four from each of the semi-finals will go through into the final. On the extreme left there, is the number four, Alan Woods, rides for the Torpus squad. And his teammate, oh, on the far right-hand side is John Lee. Bit of a sandwich for these two, and it's Ruffle that's gone to the lead, though. That man really comes off the gate quick, and he's got to saw for company. Well, they've been batting out the motors, and now batting out the semis. But what we're looking for is the two-tail and Charlie's, because they're the ones are going to get the chop. Only four go through. And John Lee's recognised the danger and trying to come up and get in alongside there. And he's dropped back a bit, while these two at the front have opened up an enormous gap, having their own little private dice. And the battle at the back is to see who's going to get chopped out. Ruffle, psychologically though, takes first place. He'll be pleased with that one. Well, 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 let's see who got the chop, because it's the last two out that go back for an early bath. Oh dear, it's John Lee Allen Woods. These are the six riders with, as before, two of them will be in fifth and sixth place and eliminated. Only four going through into the final. On the extreme right of the gate, that's Scott Williams. There's the red line rider, Guest Shooter, with City Salisbury alongside him. Quite a few gaps here on the gate. They don't quite make up their mind where they want to be. There's a chap in the yellow jersey, Jamie Vince, who scored three uh, successes in his motos. And he's got Tim Marsh alongside. Now they come off the gate, then who's going to get the whole shot this time? On the inside, looks like Williams has made a good start and Marsh is coming after him too and Shooter's dropping into second place. Clearing that first jump, it's Shooter that's grabbed the lead though. They're pumping around the panel, rocking the bike. Shooter dabs the foot down. He's got to stay there. Oh, it looks like City Souls has gone off into the woods. All the crowd looked around, he disappeared over his shortcut. That's taken him out of the race, but the man has opened up an enormous gap. It's that fellow guest Shooter. That's a turn up for the books then because uh, Tim Marsh is unusually in second place. Jamie Vince is in third. Well, that's a good one for Guest Shooter. That'll do his confidence a world of uh, good then. For those four riders who've gone through, I'll have to check to see who got chopped out. It was Mark Salisbury who went into the woods. He was eliminated together with Scott Williams. And So this is the biggie. There's £1,000 at stake as they line up for the mains. Andy Ruffle, Anthony Saul, Pete Middleton, Trevor Robinson, Guest Shooter, Tim Marsh, Jamie Vince and Richard Thorner. They're going to run three times down this track with points from 15 for first to five for eighth position. This is a psychological moment when they really get themselves geared up and wound up to come out that gate because it's so important to grab that hole shot and those maximum points. Race one underway. On the right-hand side, it's Andy Ruffle, but Anthony Sewell's come up alongside him. Can Sewell get past? Tim Marsh waiting for these two to blow and get through the gap, but he can't make it because Ruffle's shot away into a fantastic lead, riding up on the top of that berm and clearing those double whoops in fine style. Anthony Sewell now has got to get at it very, very hard indeed and put the power on the pedals. Oh, he kept pedaling there, did uh, Andy, Andy. Yes, he's still there. He's still upright. He was pedaling him. I thought he'd lost it for a minute. But he's managed to go over the line in first place. He looked back to find Saul behind him. That was an anxious moment for him. But he's taken 15 points for first. And in second place, Anthony Saul. Third, Jamie Vince. Fourth, Tim Marsh. Fifth, Peter Middleton. Sixth, Trevor Robinson. Seventh, guest shooter. And eighth was Richard Thorner. And time for Matthew Clark to have a word with the winner, Andy Ruffle. Andy, absolutely exceptional race. Brilliant piece of riding. Well Not done. Bad. Yeah, I was quite pleased with that. Uh... I had a reasonable gate position, so it's pretty good. I'm well pleased. OK, that's great. Would you like to take us through the race itself now? Yeah, sure. Well, as you can see, I had gate one. I had a bit of a bad gate. But luckily, because I was on the inside, I could scoot around. I tried to get past Anthony Saw. I had a better line of... 
first round of the finals. Right. What are you going to tactic is going to be for the next round? Well, the tactic in the next two is to just, if I'm in the first three, to just try and stay there. Um, and then hopefully I can come with the overall win. In the second of the finals, it's Andy Ruffle over there in gate number seven, whilst on gate number one, it's Anthony Saul for the Birmingham Wheels squad. There's Big Trevor Robinson, Mr Muscles himself, on gate number four. And on extreme left, Jamie Vince adjusts his helmet already now. All that gate to go. And Les Sater sends him on the way and off that gate. Now, Trevor Robinson slipped a pedal. He didn't make a good start at all. As uh, Anthony Saul dabs down a foot and those feet flying all over the place in this one. They've kept these chaps down this hill so quickly they can hardly keep upright. And it looks like Tim Marsh has stolen the lead with Saul in second place, Robinson in third, and Anthony's back in uh, fourth or fifth place, and his way out of it this time. Oh, he's trying for a double, but he isn't going to do it because he'll never get through this traffic jam in front. It's Saul who's surging for the line with Marsh alongside... Uh, yes, it was Trevor Robinson, I think, who got him on the line there, and I think Middleton came off his bike in that crash. Yes, he did finish eighth, the winner being Anthony Saul, Trevor Robinson second, Tim Marsh, Andy Ruffle, Gesher, Jamie Vince, and Richard Thorner in that order. Anthony, congratulations, a brilliant race. Uh, it's much. probably the best race you've seen here today. Thrilling all the way to the end. It was tough. Again, you're first in the competition at the moment. Uh, you've won, you come first in one and second in your other finals. There's one left. How do you feel about your chances? It's going to be just as, just as much pressure as that first race, first main event. Just got to be consistent. I'm a little bit on the outside on this gate, but I'm not going to worry about that. Work about, think about coming out clean and putting the power on as fast as I can, accelerating. Um, the, 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 the race isn't over yet. It's still very close. Could you talk Anything us through that happen. last race then? Uh, coming out of the gate, I came out, I was a little bit on a willy. Had an advantage being on the inside. But Tim, he was right, like a gate position right over me. And I could feel him on the outside of me all the way around the corner. And when I came out of the first, first turn, I slid out, so I lost ground. So I knew there was going to be some extra pressure from him coming on the inside. So I just soon not dice him into the next corner, but set him up so I'd stay right in striking distance on his back wheel. And, and luckily it worked out for me because I got him out in the next corner. That was the second to last corner. And uh, that gave me enough position to hold on to it to the last corner and pedal out and go for the win. Got one more. So the work's not over yet. No, no. How, how will your tactics differ then for this next race? Are you going to go for it or, or are you going to be... It's the only way to do is go for it. Can't uh, so be, think, can't be. If you think about it, usually when you think, it's, always, it's already too late. See, so from the whole shot all the way in? Got to. If not, I just got to think about placing well and staying up in the top five, at least four. But I'm not, I, can't, you can't guarantee, I can't guarantee on that, so I just want to be in the top three. Well, there's great excitement amongst this crowd because there's a lot at stake. Remember, £1,000 at the end of this third of the finals. A bit of a course inspection going on from Craig Schofield, one of Andy Ruffles' teammates. There's Andy, second from right on the gate. Alongside him, guest shooter on gate number three in the white strip with the red line on. There's Les Slater. And there's a gap in front of Les because Pete Middleton is not starting. The mongoose rider smashed his wrist in that second of the finals and can't start. The extreme left-hand side of the gate is Tim Marsh. Will he get the whole set? He's got a long way to go. Off the gate they come and it's Marsh on the far side. And on the inside, it's Ruff that's taken the lead, though. Andy Ruffles ahead. Andy Ruffles opened up a good lead, and Tim Marsh seemed to take a short cut across the top of that berm. And they're shoulder to shoulder now, backing up. Who wants to get these maximum points? Up on top of the berm, it's Shooter that's gone down. And looks like Marsh rode over the top of Guest Shooter. Shooter's thrown his bike away. He's disgusted with that. But Ruffles got him an enormous lead now. He took the opportunity of keeping pedalling, and he's left the rest for dead in that turmoil. He takes an easy win. Well, he kept out of trouble. He rode superbly, did uh, Andy Ruffle, to take 15 points. A lot of time now for the judges to work out the scores because, remember, Andy was fourth in the last one, won the first one, and Anthony Saul has been second again behind him. That will take a bit of uh, calculating who's going to take the maximum cash. So, Andy Ruffle won that one, followed by Anthony Saul, Jamie Vince, Trevor Robinson, Tim Marsh, guest shooter, Richard Thorner and Pete Middleton. Andy, perhaps you would like to take us through the way, seeing as though you won it. Sure, yeah, no problem. Uh, well, I had gate two. I had a pretty reasonable gate. Got up, well, actually, I had a good gate over the first jump. Um, then round the turn, I was clear. I mean, I didn't have any problems, so I just gassed it. And then I gather something happened behind me. I don't know what... And it, yeah, a guest shooter went down there. Uh, Tim and everybody's walking and running. 
Um, so I just uh, kept on the gas and uh, got it. Uh, Anthony, yeah, did you know anything about the accident itself? Yes, I was behind it at the time. Um, coming out of the gate, I clipped it, so I didn't get a great start, so I began trying to set up to move up into position, at least in the top four, top three, that's what I would need in order to be in contention for the top three money prizes. I was coming down, I was think I was in like uh, fourth position, maybe fifth, and the accident, I was in fourth, and the accident happened between number two and three position. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much had to tiptoe th through around that, and I barely made it riding on a tight rope on the top of the berm. And the only thing I can see is daylight, and... and now he's won the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you two would like to shake on it... Yeah, no problem. And the best of luck in the next rounds to both of you. Thank you very much. Well, in the end, it was a dead heat with Andy and Anthony splitting the £525 for first and second place, Trevor Robinson taking third and £125. So up on the grid for the first moto. There's Trevor Robinson, Alan Woods, Mark White, Tony Slater, Andy Ruffle, Richard Thorner, Anthony Saul. Seven of them in this first moto. Twelve pros have turned up to race today of the 16 on the schedule. So these seven have got really a battle on their hands. And this looks to me to be the sharpest and hardest of the motos today. Some real big punters in there on the left-hand side wearing the Birmingham wheels colour, Anthony Saul. And alongside him is Trevor Robinson, number three, who used to race the Birmingham wheels till he switched for Halfords. Can he screw him this time down off the gate they go. Oh, there's a slip there. Mark White fluffed a pedal. That's a bad thing to do. You can't come in because it's a very difficult track. The sharp right-hander with inside some 30 yards to start is going to cause... Oh, Saul's in trouble. Saul's has done a nose end, though. He bounced into Trevor Robinson, and that's the wrong thing to do because... Big has built like proverbial brick out house. He bounced off him, leaving these lads to fight it out the front. And Andy Ruffles found a gap to go through inside Trevor Robinson. So now with Trev dropping back into second or third, Andy Saul out the running. It's Andy Ruffle who clears that jump and he's well away in the lead now. The rest can't catch him. And Andy Ruffle is heading towards the first win of the day. Sun is shining on the righteous. He kept out of trouble. And Richard Thorne has made a superb ride there. I can see him coming in second place. Big Trev taking third. Well, let's wait for the official result because some of the tailenders will want to know their points because it all happens at the back end to see if they can go through the final. And right behind Andy Ruffle, Richard Thorner, Trevor Robinson, Alan Woods was Mark White, Tony Slater and Anthony Saul only managed seventh. On to Group B, Scott Williams, John Lee, Frankie Romain, Guest Shooter and Neil Trevor. On the extreme right, that's Scott Williams. Alongside him, wearing the number four plate on his bike is Guest Shooter. And these three have decided to go well over the left-hand side of the gate, hoping, presumably, to get a good line into that tight right-hander. So they're waiting there for the starter, and that's Les Slater, right. making sure they're all nicely poised on the gate. And down goes the foot, and down goes the gate, and down they go, that finishing straight. There's five of them then into that sharp right-hander. And, oh, my goodness, Romain's got path guest shooter. Well, two rookie pros now sorting out amongst themselves with Romain up in front. And there's trouble at the back. Looks like Shooter's lost his pedals completely. And without power, he's gone right to the back of the field. He's lying fifth and up in front still. Romain is thundering away. Well, this new pro, he come up from the super class, is certainly showing these lads a thing or two at the front. It looks like the easiest of the uh, motos so far, though, because only five in there and some of the big hitters are in the group A. Romain will be happy to get his first win, I'm sure, if he can stay upright. But he's got a challenge coming on the inside, they're all going side by side. My goodness, you can throw a bracket out of the top four. Who's going to get the line first? Looks like Romain lunges his bike forward. I think Romain got it, but goodness knows it was second, third and fourth. That was so close. Lee's moved into the second slot. I wonder if he's made it. We'll have to wait the judges to come up with the official result. Well, they call John Lee Judge Dredd, and the judges, in fact, have dreaded it because they put him back into fourth place. Frank and Romain, Neil Trevor, Scott Williams, John Lee and Guest Shooter was the order they finally placed him in, in Group B, race one. So back to the start line again, and this time we've got lined up the riders for Group A, Moto B. And there's four of them gone to the extreme right-hand side of the gate, leaving a gap in the middle. Big Trev there has got nobody alongside him to uh, have a battle with down that start straight. It's Andy Ruffle who's uh, next but one to him. Andy, who scored a win in the first mode of the series, would like to get up there to score maximum points, but it's Andy Saul, the Birmingham Wheels rider, on the extreme right but one in the yellow jersey. It's got to make good Saul, he's made a bad start. His pedal slipped, off went his foot, and he never got with it at all. Well, that's really upset Andy Saul. He's had a seventh place so far, and now he's at the back of the squad, leaving Andy Ruffle up in front. That was where he was in the first moto. He cruised home the first time, can it all at this time. Big Trevor Thompson has gone into second. That's the way they go down into that very sharp right-hander. My goodness, he does look smooth, this man, Ruffle. And uh, Trevor Robinson in second place, right at the back, that's Mark White. 
and he clears the jump. The big bunch behind, fighting for points to move through into the super final. And Sewell's made his way up now. He looks about fourth or fifth there. He's coming through, and he looks over his shoulder and really shows his back wheel to the rest of the field, who are nowhere in sight. But where has Sewell got to? Because it's important to fight his way through. And he takes first place. And uh, Scott Williams in second, Trevor Robinson in third. Well, we'll have to wait for the official result because Sewell was out of our picture now. What did happen to that man? The crowd are also interested in the result, though, and they can see that Andy Sewell was down in sixth place. My goodness, that could put him out the running. Andy Ruffle now has got two on the trot. Anthony, commiserations, two crashes and two motos. What's going wrong? Just don't know. Just having not to be my day. First moto, just got a little bit close, too, too close with the first and second place rider. I was in the lead, and um, Andy Ruffle came up underneath me, and he took a move that if I was in his spot, I would have did the same thing, but we got a little bit too close. So Do you blame him pedals. at all for that? Well... I don't think, it's, it's, I mean, it's a contact sport. It's professionalism involved into it. You're going to get some elbows, you're going to get clipped. In the interval, the uh, riders relax whilst we have a chance to talk to two of the girls. Yes, they do go BMX racing. Melanie Volvo in 1984 was uh, number two in the 14 plus, whilst Rachel Holmes was 11 to 13, 84 British champion. Rachel, how much training do you do? Well, I, I run most days and uh, I practice on my bike as well about two hours. I do starts and sprints and just generally bike handling and jumps and things, really. Melanie, what about you? I do just about the same at lunch times and after school. I go up to the track and do starts. I've got a starting gate and uh, practice the jumps mainly. Now, turning to professionals now, uh, I know you have your own shop, Melanie. Um, what are your views on turning pro? Uh, I'd like to be the first girl to turn pro and hopefully it will be the end of this year, the beginning of next year. I have talked to the organisations about it, but it's just really we need full, two full gates of girls for them to start off a uh, pro class in the girls. So Rachel, is it just a question of numbers? It is, yeah, but I think I would definitely turn pro and I think a lot of the other girls would as well because uh, there is some money to be made and I think some of the girls should make some of it. Yeah. If you, if you turn pro, what's the chance of you actually racing the lads? Uh, well, if we turn pro, there will be, it'll just be a girls pro class, but they could do open pro class, which there again, we will be racing against the boys and girls racing together. Rachel, is that something you're looking forward to? Uh, yes and no. I, not really, because we'd be racing lads who are 17, 18, and they're a lot bigger and stronger, of course, but sometimes, yeah, but to see if we could beat them, but it would be very difficult. Well, surely there's no way that either of you are going to be anywhere near as good as the lads. Oh, definitely. We'd definitely beat some of the lads. Yes, <laughs> you do beat some of them. Some of the, A lot of them don't like getting beaten by girls, and they just go to take you out in races. Because you're a girl and, you know, we can beat some of them. All right, not all of them, but you have a go. <laughs> is it a lot rougher than lads racing? No, it isn't. I would say that the girls is sometimes can be rougher. Yeah. The boys race rougher against the girls than they do against their own boys. Oh, well, that's boys for you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, girls. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I wonder what the pros think about racing against girls. These two lads can't think about any more racing today. They've got to watch from the sidelines. Alan Woods and Anthony Sewell have been eliminated as have Richard Thorner and Scott Williams. So there's no points for these in the overall championship, and that's a shame for Anthony Sewell, because he had been tying with Andy Ruffle when we start the racing today. So with the eight riders up on the gate, Mark White, Tony Slater, John Lee, Andy Ruffle, Neil Trevor, Trevor Robinson, Frankie Romain and Guest Shooter contesting the points, with 15 across the line for first, down to five for the last man. On the extreme right there in the white, that is Mark White. Alongside him in the Halford Strip is Big Trevor Robinson. And uh, the man who's been going extremely well today, Andy Ruffle, is alongside him within the VG Strip, Frankie Romain. And uh, going across there, we can see also alongside them the figure of uh, Tony Slater, John Lee, Neil Trevor and Geth Shooter. And for once, no American on the line. That really is a turn up for the books. So here we go then with the first of the... Mains for the pros. Remember, they go three times down this track. We top the scores up as they go through. Who's going to take maximum points this time? Eyes down, get poised. 
anxious moment. Psychologically, who gets the gate now? Who's away first? It looks like Shooter's made a superb start from the outside line. He's got to make it good in that right-hander, though, because it's a very tight turn, and we know from previous motos it's a difficult place to turn up and sharp up that berm, but he's made it in fine style. Shooter's looking good. He's out in front now. John Lee, surprised, he's gone into second place. Ruff's back in third. Andy Ruff was in third place. Trevor Robinson's back in fourth, but guess Shooter has left them all behind now, and that is a tremendous burst of speed for this pro. He's out there, but looks like Ruffles coming inside. John Lee dabbed a foot down, missed the pedal, couldn't come back up into action fast enough. He's lost at least three bike lengths on Andy Ruffle, but his guest shooter has got plenty of time to look back and take first spot. Andy Ruffle taking second slot. Well, that really was a turn up for the books, and congratulations, Andy Ruffle, to guest shooter on a fine ride indeed. So, confirmation, guest shooter first, Andy Ruffle in second place. John Lee did a good ride to finish in third place, pushing Tony Slater fourth, Trevor Robinson fifth, uh, Neil Trevor was sixth, Mark White seventh, and poor old Frankie remained back in eighth place. These pros really attract the attention of the crowd when they see him come up on the line because those are the boys who really have got the charisma. They've got the cash too because with over a thousand pounds to go for this time, who's going to get the lolly? This being the uh, Moto 2 in the mains and slap bang in the centre there. We can see on the right hand side that Frankie remained, Neil Trevor next to him, then John Lee, Mark White and in the rally strip, the red, blue and the yellow colours. Last but one on the left-hand side. Andy Ruffle, will he make a good start at the gate this time? Because Andy would like to head Guess Shooter, who won the first one, but Guess made a very good start again. That's two super hole shots for this man from Ilkeston. The lad there in the red line strip is out in front now. Over that uh, double whoop, he took it in for oh, all this trouble at the back that looked to me like Frankie Romain, who upended his bicycle, and he's now going to complete the rest of the race on his backside, or so it seems. But up in front, still, it's Shooter, plowing away, setting a fine turn of speed at the front. Well, this will really get him going because he won the first one, and Andy Ruffle's got to go after him now. Ruff went high on the burn that time, took it too high, leaving this man in front, Shooter, to paddle home. So it looks like another clear win. That was so easy, he had time to look back again at Andy Ruffle. Well, 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 well. So Andy must say, well done to the young man. And Andy in second place, that is really a turn up for the books. One, two, we had that in the previous moto. The official result has been confirmed. Get Shooter first, Andy Ruffle second. John Lee who took uh, third place, followed by Trevor Robinson fourth, Mark White fifth, and in sixth place was Tony Slater. Seventh, Neil Trevor, and Frankie Romain ended up eighth and on his backside. In the third and final done. main, can we break this one, two and three? Because guest shooter Andy Ruffle and John Lee have been first, second and third in the two previous mains. So guest shooter leading with 30 points at the moment to Andy Ruffle's 24 and John Lee with 20 points. That's the total they've got. Looking on the extreme left there, Andy's got a very good gait indeed because he's got the short line, that sharp right-hander. And next but one to him is uh, guest shooter who's leading overall. Can Andy get down there fast enough now to make sure that Shooter can't get by him and run out Victor? We shall see because the riders now are getting ready for that anxious moment when the starter calls. Riders ready, pedals ready and go. It's a very, very tight moment. The butterflies in the stomach. There's a lot of stake as they come off that gate now. Reputations and money to be... Oh, shit! Oh, my goodness, Sugar hit Ruffle. Or was it Slater? I don't know. Somebody collapsed into Ruffle. He drifted out. He went down. He hasn't got a catch chance. He's had a catch in his bunch now because Mark White's leading. Well, that's, again, the turn up for the books. The distance, one could see. The figure of Andy Ruffle back on his bike. He's got all the work to do. And in front, it's White leading. It's White has got tremendous lead at the moment. With behind him, guess who in second place. John Lee moving up into third. Big Trevor Robinson moving up into fourth place. Still in the lead then. Mark White from the Grimsby area. He's heading away towards that finishing line. He's powering down, puts his head down, goes for it, but Shooter comes alongside him on the outside. Shooter's going over the line. That's three on the drop for Shooter. Oh, a triple. What tremendous bike riding by Shooter to take three first, and Mark White is happy with his second. He would love to have won that one, but my goodness, it was great riding by Shooter to take him over the line in first place, and no sign of Andy Ruffle. Well, there, on the finish li line, we can see he took eighth place. Oh, he got back on his bike. He could not get any further up the chart. So guess Shooter first, Mark White second, Trevor Robinson third, John Lee, Tony Slater, Frank Romain and Neil Trevor all headed home, Andy Ruffle. Bad luck for Andy. Andy, two seconds and then what happened? Yes, uh, what happened? That's a good question. Um, you know, it's very, very close. Um, I had an inside gate, um, I had an average start, um, as you can see here, and then Tony Slater was just on the inside of me and uh, just elbowed me off the track. Couldn't quite see you there, unfortunately. Yes, but, uh, 
you know, it's, it's very dodgy racing out there. It's very tough, you know, they're going for a thousand pounds, so uh, nobody likes to uh, give any. Uh, but, you know, this, it's, that's how racing goes. I was hoping to get a bit better than second in that one. Um, but, you know, I've won the last three nationals uh, in a row, so I suppose the, the run's got her in somewhere. The man who toppled Andy Roth from the tree was Geth Shooter. Three firsts there gave him 45 points overall, whereas John Lee pulled up with 29 points to equal Andy Ruffle in second place. Trevor Robinson had fourth with 27 points, Mark White was fifth, Tony Slater sixth, Neil Trevor in seventh place and Frankie Remain eighth. If we take all those points and add them to the score from the Birmingham round, we see that overall Andy Ruffle still leads with 68 points. Guest shooters moved up into second with 66, Trevor Robinson is third with 55 points, and despite being sidelined and not taking part in the finals, Anthony Saul had 39 points with him, which kept him in fourth place. And John Lee was fifth with 29. In Group A, first murder is Mark White, Richard Thorner, guest shooter, Neil Trevor, Mark Salisbury and Big Tim March. That's City Salisbury, taking deep breath there in the centre. Alongside him, Tim March for the VG MRD squad. And our change of colours for uh, the lad from down west because Richard Thorner riding in the pale blue jersey seems to have uh, stopped his sponsorship with the CW lads, red and yellow. It's gone off his jersey now. Uh, that there alongside him is uh, Neil Trevor for the Hustler Racing team. And on the left-hand side adjusting his helmet is Mark White. You certainly need a good crash helmet on this course because the sun has baked the surface as hard as concrete. And in fact, they do come down a concrete start ramp as they hit the bottom of that descent. In the lead, it looks to me like Guest Shooter taking over where he left off last week. He tripled last week and it looks like he's going all out for this one. Behind him, it's City Salisbury in second place. As Shooter loves these conditions, he really has rocketed into the lead then. And behind him, the battle is for second and third and fourth because City Salisbury looking good in second. Tim Marsh in an unaccustomed third place. Mark White is behind him in fourth. Then it looks like uh, uh, Neil uh, uh, Trevor behind him, but as they come in towards that finishing straight, just one final speed jump, and time then for uh, the lad in front to ease back. That looked dead simple for guest shooter. And uh, Mark Salisbury coming into second place, that would have caused one or two consternations in the camp, and I don't think that Tim would have enjoyed being third behind him. That confirms the result, Mark White uh, taking fourth, Richard Thorner in fact was fifth, Neil Trevor pushed back into sixth place. The crowd enjoying the sunshine and looking forward to some super racing, particularly in Group B, because here we've got the two Americans up alongside the British riders. In this first moto, Nelson Shandy, Andy Ruffle, Trevor Robinson, Tony Slater, Anthony Sewell, Jamie Vince and Ian Dixon. So it's a time to concentrate for those riders because the Americans are big, big competition. The big, big man on the right-hand side there is Trevor Robinson. Already up on the handlebars and up against the gate, it's Andy Ruffle, leader in the series so far, and looking quite nonchalant alongside him is Anthony Sewell. In Dixon in the yellow jersey with the Scorpions all over it, but the Scorpion BMX rider alongside him is Jamie Vince, and <laughs> saying hello to us, Nelson Shannady. Nice to see you, Nelson, first time up on the gate in the Screen Sports Series. He's on the extreme left-hand side of that gate. Down they go. Can he make a good start this time? He's got a long way to go over the far side. And yes, he has. He's stolen the lead. Dabs down a foot to shut out Andy Ruffalo. Try to come up on the inside. But Andy's got through. Andy found a gap and went through. That was super bike riding by Andy Ruffle. And the rest are pumping the pedals behind him now. And Anthony Sewell comes up inside. Andy Ruffle. And Shanley sees a chance to come through too. But no, the rally rider in front is still clear in the lead. Swinging round, looking good. Andy Ruffle then heading toward that finish line as you've got the Americans chasing after him now. Andy Shaw comes up alongside Andy Ruffle, heading towards the line. That looked to be a lunge by half a wheel. I think Saul might have got it. Where'd they go in the Rinner's enclosure? Yes, Saul is on the left. It looks like he won it. Well, Andy will at least be happy because that first motor will give him enough points to help him on his way. That's what it's all about, getting in the top four to qualify. The official result then shows Anthony Saul first, Andy Ruffle second, Nelson Shandy was in third place, then Jamie Vince, Trevor Robinson, Ian Dixon and Tony Slater. The well, the pros have always put on a good show for us and here, lined up for the first of the final mains, Andy Ruffle, Mark White, Trevor Robinson, guest shooter, Nelson Shandy, Tim Mark, Mark Salisbury and Anthony Saul. Now, before they get up on the gate, they draw four start positions, and that's what this little black bag's all about. 
and checking to see what gate they'll get from one to eight. And on this particular track, to be on the far side is something of a disadvantage because of that big sweeping uh, left-hander. It's a long way to come round. On the inside, it's the shortest line, and that's the spot that Trevor Robinson has got in the Halford Strip, number three on his bike. Uh, alongside him, Nelson Shanady, then Mark White, and there with number two on his plate is Andy Ruffle, breathing deeply and psyching himself up. Hidden behind those dark uh, glasses is Anthony Sewell, and alongside him, Geth Shooter. There's City Salisbury, here of the armour plating, and on the outside gate, Tim Marsh has got a long way to go. Good position for Andy Ruffle right in the centre now. He looks nice, calm, comfortable. The rest of them are up there. Bounce, bounce, bounce on the wheels. Bounce, bounce, bounce on the pedals. Get a good grip of those bars and down goes the gate. They've got to get the pedal pressure really on to head to that first sharp left hand. And shannon has got a good start indeed. shannon has gone round there. In the lead with Marsh lying second. Marsh is on his wheel though. He's going to let him get out of the way because Marsh has been training over in the States during last winter with the great Greg Hill. Knows a lot about the tactics of the Americans. And they respect this Tim Marsh because he's been European champion three times. And Nelson Shannon though still has the lead as Marsh is after him. And looks like Trevor Robinson in third place at the moment. Heading in there towards that final jump. It's Shannon though from Marsh. Well Shannon's pleased with that one because he knew he got big Tim on his wheel. And no, not much, no time to put the brakes on. Oh, the girls in the finishing line there laughing at that one. They nearly collected the results right in their arms. Nelson Shani was first, Tim Marsh was second, Trevor Robinson in third place, Andy Ruffle fourth, Mark White uh, fifth, uh, Salisbury was in sixth place, and that's interesting because seventh and eighth, Anthony Saul and Guest Shooter occupied the last two spots. Moving on to the second of the mains, the riders up on that man-made gate on this very, very smart Milton Keynes track, are lined up with, on the right-hand side, Anthony Saul. Next to him, Trevor Robinson, then Guest Shooter, who finished in last place on that first main. Tim Marsh alongside him, still looks pensive to the bold Tim. Nelson Shandy about his crash at the moment, getting some fresh air into his lungs. Andy Ruffle, loosening off his arms, and City Salisbury adjusting his face mask. Very necessary to keep the dust out of your nose, whereas on the extreme left-hand side there, that's uh, Mark White getting himself lined up for that charge right across the track. He's got the difficult gate over on the far left-hand side. Oh dear me, looks like Shooter's not happy. He's gone back down his saddle as the stars of Les Slater moves forward to the gate. Oh, he's got him underway now. They're all comfy, they're all off. And who's going to get them? Oh, looks to me like Ruffle's gone. Andy Ruffle lost it completely, buried himself just inside that first 30 metres or so. And it's Shooter who's gone into the lead. Shooter who's last in the first moto, has now really got to get amongst the points. And he's got Saul for company and Shanley behind them. Well, this has really got the crowd roaring now because the Brits have gone into front. And it's a young rookie pro, only 18 years of age. Guess Shooter flying away. Well, the Americans have shown they've got fine finishing sprints. Can they catch him on the line? Shoves his bike down. That was so close. I'll wait for the judges' verdict on that one because Saul absolutely lunged for the line alongside Guest Shooter and uh, they've gone into first and second slots and he's congratulated him, he's agreed with the verdict, he's let Shooter in there in the first slot and Saul in second but it was so close and that's Andy Ruffle riding now, a lonesome man coming in in last place. Well, 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 that is not an accustomed position for Andy. He's leading overall now, Screen Sport Championship, and he has to get in there to finish, even to collect the odd five points for eight. But 15 points go to Guest Shooter. Anthony Saul in second. Nelson Shandy was third. Tim Marsh fourth. Trevor Robinson was fifth. Mark Salisbury sixth. Seventh was Mark White. And there the poor dejected Andy Ruffle taking eighth place and those five points. But no doubting the success of the red line rider, Guest Shooter. These mains just keep getting better and better. Geth, magnificent win. Thanks a lot. Was, I got a good start and uh, I just tried to block everybody out, but Anthony gave me a good run down the last straight. Take us through it then. Well, I got a good start and then I, I like pedaled the first jump. I didn't know whether to or not, so I kept it going. And uh, I was panicking all the way because I, I knew Anthony or Nelson would be close. So. Round this, this corner here, I just kept my foot out to try and stop people coming under me. But as I say, down the last straight, I thought, you know, I didn't know what to do. Anthony got very close. The crowds are going wild for you, I mean. Yeah. Had a bit of bad luck in the first one. I, 
I got a good start, but then I got bunched and I got, I think, five spokes ripped out of my front wheel. So I've had to change front wheels. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm pleased that, anyway. That wheel must be doing an awful lot of good. You came through there in magnificent fashion. Congratulations again. Best of luck in the next main. Thanks. Let's go right back to David now for the final of the mains. Yes, in this final main, there's a lot at stake. Cumulatively, so far, from the first two mains, Nelson Shanley's in the lead with 25 points. That's him slap bang on the left-hand side, that picture there. But guest shooter, Anthony Saul, Tim uh, Marsh and Trevor Robinson are all within three points of each other, vying for second place. And that's guest shooter there with 20 points, alongside him, Mark White, who, interestingly enough, together with uh, Mark Salisbury and Andy Ruffle, all have 14 points, and they're back in sixth, seventh and eighth cumulative together. Tim Marsh over the left-hand side there. He knows what he's got to do now. He's got 21 points. Nelson Shannon's got 25. Tim's got to win this one to take home all the loot. Remember, there's £1,000 at stake. And uh, with such a close battle going on, it still is up for grabs. Oh, it looks like Shan is not settled very comfortably in the centre there. Or would it be a psychological bit of action? Because sometimes they step off the bikes just to upset the rest of the riders. It really is a cat and mouse game up there. And it's, it's Mark Wider's going up and down. Solby doesn't like it. He's looking back at the uh, referee because on the start gate there, the starter Les Slater can in fact warn the riders if they don't get up when he's ready for them. They look settled now, though. Oh, they're away! But Shooter made a bad start. He never got his foot on his pedal. He's off the back now. And it's uh, Shooter. Oh, Marsh has gone as well. This is disastrous all for the Brits so far. So Trevor Robinson's taking up the challenge now. As Sewell sneaks into the lead. And two of the Brits are out of it. Both Shooter and Marsh way off the back, but way in the front. And as uh, Sewell makes a super smooth left-hander, so Robinson loses ground because he stubbed his foot. And it's up to Ruffle to come on the inside now. Shooter's still at the back, but Sewell knows he's going to catch this man hammering down towards the finish, and uh, Shan is back in fourth place. So Saul beats Robinson, who must be really upset about the way he slipped that foot on that last but one turn. Big Trev was in there, and Big Tim bit the dust, didn't he? He is really hurt. Now, once again, you can see why these riders have to have protective clothing. He must have hit that deck at over 30 miles an hour, and uh, the other rider who came down to, Mark White, this really was Crash City today. But Tim looks game enough to get back and ride back in towards the finish area with the crowd applauding the game effort that he put in. That really was a rough and tumble final main of the day. And that's the official results. First, Anthony Sewell. Second, Trevor Robinson. Then Andy Ruffle, Nelson Shandy, Mark Salisbury, guest shooter, Mark White and Tim March in that order. Adding together the points scored in each of those three uh, mains, Nelson Shandy ran out winner with 34 points ahead of Anthony Sewell, Trevor Robinson and guest shooter. Tim Marsh took fifth place, Andy Ruffle sixth, Mark Salisbury seventh, and Mark White was eighth on the day. Let's take forward those scores uh, and put them with the first two rounds, and we see now that Guest Shooter has moved into first place ahead of Andy Ruffle, reversing the order in which they were when we started today's racing. Back in third is Trevor Robinson, fourth Anthony Sewell, and in fifth place, Tim Marsh. Some of the crowd have brought their fishing umbrellas along today. Good way of keeping out of the wet. But perhaps they ought to have brought their fishing rods as well and the line and the hooks and all the paraphernalia because at the moment the puddles are filling up and perhaps some of the fish from the Trent might leap over here and see what's going on. Well, the riders aren't amused by the conditions, but they're getting up there on the gate and taking precautions because still next to Guest Shooter on the right was Shannady in the blue tracksuit top. And this man, Ian Dixon, is riding round in a complete set of waterproof overalls. On the extreme left-hand side, showing his sponsor's colours, Rally, determined uh, to do a good one, is the bold Andy Ruffle. And can he make it from the far gate? This is the most difficult one to come off and he knows what he has to do now to get into the lead. He certainly won the first one in fine style, but as he go off the gate now, can he get from the far side? The rest of the field pushing forward. A better start than Tony Slade in the middle, but it's Nelson Shannady that's gone into the lead now. Shan and it looks like guest shooter, and Andy Ruffle bumped shoulders then, and that has left a big gap, and Shannady's taken full advantage of it now. The uh, 
problem for Shooter and for Ruffle is to close that gap because when they clashed, that's the moment that let this man get into the lead. Whilst behind Tony Slater, who had a disastrous start in the first moto, he's working his way through. He needs the points to try and get into the final. And I think that this time Slater is into fourth place while Shandy goes into first. And uh, that will please the American because he doesn't like these conditions. It's very awkward when you live in a place like Miami, Florida to adapt to these conditions. Certainly, he took first slot. Second was guest shooter, Andy Ruffle in third, Tony Slater fourth, and Richard Thorner and Ian Dixon back in fifth and sixth place. Well, I wonder what Nelson Shandy thought about that and these conditions. Nelson, a second, then a first. Good day for you today? Doing good so far, yes. How is the weather affecting your riding? Uh, it's not really bothering me that much. It's just making, making me feel uh, my muscles real cold, <laughs> hard to warm up and get loose on the track. Take us through the race then, now. Okay. Just get the whole shot in, uh, on this track. I pedaled over the first jump. That helps a lot. And uh, I just try to maintain a smooth line and try not to slide too much in the mud. Are the corners bad for this? Not really. The track's holding up really well. It's wet and muddy, but it sticks really good. It feels like a sponge. So it's good. It's, good. it's fine. In between you, Geth, and Andy now? And this Seems, yeah, it looks like. Well, the BMX track builders have always had to take into account the uh, fact that in our summer we get more than the fair share of rain from time to time. And right now the heavy roller being brought out to level the inside of that corner, which is rutting badly and causing some difficulty for the riders to hold the correct line. These tracks are usually constructed with hardcore and then some uh, arbory shale and a sandy top to finish it off. And at the moment, the riders inspecting that particular point, which has been uh, giving them a, a bit of trouble as they've been swinging round uh, at a great speed. So the heavy rollers coming out, perhaps more at home over the other side of the Trent, because we're not far from the Trent Bridge cricket ground. However, unlike uh, cricket, rain doesn't stop play here, and the riders will soon be back in action for the next part of the programme. If anything, the conditions have got a darn sight worse now. Look at that rain absolutely bucketing down as the riders then prepare themselves for three of the main finals. We've got Anthony Sewell, Andy Ruffle, Tony Slater, guest shooter Trevor Robinson, Jamie Vince, Nelson Shandy and Pete Middleton. They'll be scoring 15 for first, then 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 and 5 points down for the 8th man to finish. On the extreme right, that's the rally rider Andy Ruffle, alongside him Anthony Sewell. This is Trevor Robinson, the Halfords lad adjusting his goggles. And alongside him in the red line strip, guest shooter. Those are the four on the right hand side of the gate. Uh, starter there, uh, Les Slater with hands in pockets, keeping warm before he gets into action. That's uh, Tony Slater, number 5 and bouncing his bike up and down to get a good grip. Cleaning his bike at the moment, the Scorpion rider Jamie Vince, and flexing his muscles is Nelson Shanady. The trouble with these cold conditions, it can get at your legs, and that will make it rather difficult when you come off the start, because they have to come out with a really great, powerful burst. And on the extreme left then, it's Pete Middleton that's drawn the short straw. That's the bad gate, that far left-hand gate. And good luck to Pete. They come off the gate now. Andy Rollins got the whole shot. He's in a good position on the inside. Has he made a good advantage of it? Yes, he has. He's forced his way through the front now, with Trevor Robinson into second place. These are one and two now. And they go down that back straight towards that uh, sharp left-hander. And really, Ruffle has left them all for dead. There's an enormous gap opening up now as Robinson has got uh, second place, or has he? There's a great galaxy of talents coming up to Big Trevor, and I think that uh, Nelson Shanley's going after that uh, second place. No, it isn't. It's Jamie Vince that's bored his way through, chasing after Andy Ruffle, who takes first on the line. Jamie Vince, yes, was in second place, and Nelson Shandy third, so let's wait for confirmation of that as our rest of the people sitting out here having completed their races. These young lads are very keen to watch the pros in action. And uh, the interesting thing there on that pro lineup was a guest shooter was sixth, Anthony Sewell was seventh. Well, I wonder what Andy Ruffle thought about that one. Andy, magnificent win in the first main. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Um, to tell you the truth, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, my form during the motos wasn't absolutely spot on. I was getting a bit uh, worried about my gating. Um, but I mean, in that one, I got a pretty good gate and I just went for it. 
Well, Andy Ruffle had there with him his girlfriend wearing one of his whole shot T-shirts. That's the name of Andy's company, and that's what he says you have to get for the whole shot. These lads now are rather happy that the sun has come out because uh, with the sunshine and the strong wind, the track is beginning to dry, and also that very slippy gate is drying out too. So they'll be very pleased with this one, the second of the finals. And up there on the extreme left-hand side of the gate, we can see Geth Shooter. Now, <laughs> I don't think he likes that. You can see the nonchalant gesture. He realises it on the far side there. Nobody so far has won a moto from that far side in the Pro Series. Let's see how they go now. Oh, he slipped his pedal, and that looked like he dropped straight back. Poor old Tony Slater. He's not had a very fortunate series so far, and he's gone straight to the back of this field. Having slipped his pedal just shows that still, despite the sun drying the track, it's very difficult to keep your feet on the pedals. And the man pedalling away at the front now, that's Anthony Sewell, followed by Guest Guest Shooter in a second second place that is a phenomenal performance he's come from the far side of the gate into second and now he's challenging Saul he's trying to get up on the inside doesn't quite make it so Saul now looks like he's home and dry yes the sun is shining on the man from uh, California who goes over the line in first place but what a fine ride by uh, young guest shooter to get himself from the far side into second place that really was a turn up for the books and shows what just can be done the crowd also waiting the results and there we have it, Anthony Sewell in first place, Guest Shooter a fine second, Andy Ruffle in third, Nelson Shanley the American in fourth place, Jamie Vince in fifth, Pete Middleton sixth and Trevor Robinson seventh. And Tony Slater having slipped that pedal was way back in eighth place. As they line up on that uh, slippy gate on the right hand side, Guest Shooter's got 19 points so far, Nelson Shanley next to him has also got 19 points. Well, Tony Slater isn't in the hunt at the moment, nor is Trevor Robinson. The interest, really, is centred further across the gate because they're the boys really chasing after this top money today. And Jamie Vince there has got 20 points, so he's in this top five, and alongside him is Anthony Sewell with 21 points. But the man they've all got to watch is Andy Ruffle, and he's alongside Pete Middleton. On the extreme left there, uh, Andy has 25 points, and he's got the worst gate as well. So he's really got to go some now to stay out and uh, take home the max amount of cash, because this is the third, mainly third final as such, and over on the extreme left, Andy Ruffle, and on the extreme right, Guest Shooter. Well, the sun has come out now. They couldn't wish for a better third time down this track. There they go, as Les sets them underway this time. There's a lot at stake. There's 1,000 pounds in prizes, and they're really rocketing forward, and it's Nelson Shannon that's stolen the lead, and Andy Ruffles not in the hunt at the moment. Yes, he is. He's over on third place on the far side, but uh, Shannon is really going like stink, and Sewell's going into second place, and... Uh, Ruffles gone back into third, no he's been chopped, up on the inside has come Middleton and Andy Ruffles slipped his pedal, that's going to make it difficult for him to stay on top of this field because in front it's Shanley first, followed by Saul, hammering down the finishing straight now, Ruffles not inside at all, well he's cooked it this time because first over the line, that was Nelson Shanley and followed by Anthony Saul, well that's going to turn the overall uh, points list right upside down as the crowd now begin to make their way home, we're going to have to look for that result though and top the points up and my goodness, it was way down there in fifth place, so Nelson Shandy was first, Andy Sewell second, Guest Shooter third, Pete Middleton into fourth place, and that was it, Poor old Andy in fifth with Jamie Vince, Trevor Robinson and Tony Slater following on in that order. Magnificent race, what was the difference? The difference is that I didn't spin out on the gate, I had troubles on my first pedal out of the gate, I kept slipping on the mud, <laughs> and I managed to keep it from sliding in the third moto, which was all I was asking for, that was just my the, the biggest problem I had in, in the main. Well he must have liked the track today Nelson because he collected 34 points. Andy Stoll and Andy Ruffle tied for second place with 33 points each, whilst in fourth place was Guest Shooter with 29. And then in fifth place, Jamie Vince took 27 points, Pete Middleton was sixth with 24, Trevor Robinson seventh with 21, and Tony Slater had a rather bad day, was back in eighth with only 15 points. Adding today's score to the first three rounds, we see Andy Ruff has now moved ahead of Guest Shooter. He was one point behind before we started this, so now he has 125, as Andy, to Guest Shooter 122. Trevor Robinson is third with 100. Well, whilst the pros are top of the bill and they're waiting their next event, these young lads are having a go too, because today there's somewhere around 560 competitors in different age groups from five years of age and upwards. And of course, they like to be actually showing off on exactly the same track that the pros are racing upon. And this track here, in fact, is based inside a greyhound circuit. Now, that's not a greyhound practicing, that's a young lad being taken for a walk by his dog. 
So we've got a lot of spectators here who've come to watch the racing, and these lads are the ones they've come for. Hello, Pete Middleton, over there with number six on his plate, looking confident and happy now that his wrist is improving. He took a second place in the first of the motos, and here we have Ian Dixon, who finished last uh, in the first moto. So he's got to get amongst the points and move up the chart to uh, make sure of getting into the finals. Alongside him, Neil Trevor. Well, he had a good ride because he was sixth last time through. Can he get in amongst the small points this time? And poor old uh, Slater on the outside. Tony's not been having very good starts still, and he only got uh, into fifth place last time, but he's got the whole shot this time on the extreme right-hand side. That's a good place for Tony to be. Will his confidence be restored by a good start? On the extreme left then, that's where they've got to come a long way across the track. And Jamie Vince, who won the last moto, is uh, over there alongside Pete Middleton. They're coming across to, going like stink there, but Middleton has taken the lead. Looks like Middleton's on the top of the moto. Uh, oh, Marsh, Marsh swung out. Where's Marsh got to? I saw him go over the top of the berm. And has he got back now because they're watching the leaders going through? And that's the bright red bike of Pete Middleton powering into that left-hander. He looks good today. He's full of speed, is Pete Middleton. There's Frankie Romain. There's the yellow jersey of Jamie Vince, but I couldn't see what happened there to Tim Marsh. He's not in his leading four. In fact, that's Neil Trevor has gone into fourth place now. As over the line goes Pete Middleton in first place. Then Jamie Vince was second. That looked like, yes, it was Frankie Romain into third place. And Neil Trevor happily into fourth. Uh -uh. I thought uh, I saw him ride high over the berm. Tim Marsh does not look very happy indeed. He had a blood clot in his leg in uh, Canada when he was racing in the World Championship. And the look on his face then said it all. Yes, he finished seventh. My goodness. Now, that'll be turn for the books. He's got to do a lot better than this. Pete Middleton in first. Jamie Vince in second. They swapped places from the first moto. And this time, Frankie remained third. Neil Trevor fourth. He'll like that. Ian Dixon fifth. Uh, Tony Slater sixth. But Tim Marsh will not like being seventh. This uh, third moto for Group A certainly is one that Tim Marsh is going to have to really work hard at because he has got to finish first or second to have any chance of going through into the final. And the rest of the lads here won't give him an inch then because Big Tim, who had the number one plate last year as the best in the superclass division, is up against some lads who would like to score points over the bold Tim and none of them will lose any options at all to get past him. And that's the man there, Tim Marsh, the VG Strip. He certainly is a big, strong, hard, fast rider. But has he lost his confidence following that crash? We shall have to wait and find out, because these are two he's got to topple. Jamie Vince on the right won the first moto, and alongside him, smiling Pete Middleton won the second. So he's got good crew alongside him now. He'll have to follow their wheels or get in front of them, because they can set a good pace. But if they block him on the way through, he'll be out as they go off the gate now. Marsh has got all the work to do. He's in the middle there, and he's got a good start. He's got a good start at the moment, but no, Pete Middleton's got inside him. He left a bit of a gate open, and Pete Middleton's gone through. It looks like Jamie Vince has dropped back into third place, but Marsh looks comfortable now. He's in second place. This is what he wants to be. And over the top of that jump, as they come down there, Tim Marsh is back there in second place. Middleton looking good in first place, but behind him... Oh, no, no, Marsh has lost his pedal. His foot came off the pedal. He's dropped back from second, third. He looks like fourth. He's coasting. Oh, he's coasting. Oh, that's terrible bad luck for Tim Marsh. Oh, a nod from Pete Middleton, because he knows he's through into the final. As is Jamie Vince, and I think Frankie Romain has made it as well. But where's Tim Marsh? He's coasting in slowly. That was disaster for the bold Tim. He went over that jump. His foot came off the pedal. He just could not put the power on, stay in second place. And there he is, down in seventh yet again. Well, that's taken him out. He has no chance of winning that car. Tim, last in that last race, you've got to be very disappointed. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably an understatement, actually. Uh, you've not qualified. What went wrong? Well, in the second race, I um, fell off. In the, in the first turn, going through the first turn. And after that, I needed to, in the last race, I needed to get a first or a second to qualify. And I got a good start behind Pete. And I just, coming into that turn over there, the third turn, I um, tried to just go inside of Pete and keep my line so no one to go inside of me. And I slid out, because the turns are real slippery. And by the time I got my foot back on the pedal, which is slid, with, since I'd slid out, um, two guys were past me. I needed a first or second to qualify. So. You know, looking at the replay, you, you see there I'm in second, and I come come down this straight, as you can see now, just trying to pull up a little bit on Pete. I come in here, and you see me slide out right right now. I, I'm out of picture. Just behind Pete. Okay, and then everybody, you see, look, I slip my pedal. There's four guys past me. I need to be in the first two to qualify, so I just sat down after that. Yeah. You know, I'm out there to win, not just to... You really lost basically yeah, the just, whole race on that last yeah, on that corner. Yeah, this, that's the thing with BMX, though, you see. It's just a, a split second, you can, you're either a winner or a... 
a loser. You know, there's no second or third places. You either win or you lose. Yeah. And I lost. <laughs> Have you... Well, we've been concentrating on the Screen Sports series with pro racing. But one young lad really has set the press alight for the last couple of years. And he's gathered here today at Nottingham with a vast collection of trophies. Three British Championships, one European Championship and two from the World Championships. It's young David Moore. And here we've got John, Rachel Moore and his sister over there too. And a little lad holding the trophy here. Now, first of all, tell us exactly how old you are. Eight years old. You're exactly eight years of age. And uh, now then, for an eight-year-old uh, world champion, just what does it feel like? All right. It Get feels all right, hmm? Gets a bit bored, though. Gets a bit bored? What, always winning? Yeah. Now then, if you're always winning, though, what's your ambition going to be? Are you going to be a pro bike rider? I don't know yet. You're thinking about it, are you? Yeah. Now then, how many trophies have you won so far? 500. No. There's 500 at the moment. Where do you keep them? Um, living room, lounge. I think you have to move into a bigger house shortly, won't you, the way you're going on. Now then, um, if you're not going to be a pro BMX rider, what do you think you'd like to be other than a pro BMX rider in the future? Well, I'm going to start building after my dad. Your dad's a builder, is he then? Yeah. Well, we wish you the best luck, whatever you do in the future, young David Moore. But they call you a soap dodger, though. Why do they call you a soap dodger? Because I get the muckiest at meetings. Well, we'll watch out for you and keep nice and clean because you've got the finals to come now, haven't you? Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, the judges have worked out the scores now, and that's the lineup. Unfortunately, City Salisbury had 13 points to Anthony Sewell's 12, so he didn't make it through into the final. Nor did Neil Trevor. He had 15 points to Tony Slater's 14. So they worked their way through by the skin of their teeth and are lining up there with the other chaps who got home convincingly. Guest shooter, he did extremely well in winning one of his heats, being uh, third and then second, and the local crowd will really be rooting for him. And for Pete Middleton too, because he's had a very good run into the final as well. Andy Ruffle uh, is there doing some press-ups, and he's looking in good form at the moment, but he had to watch it last time because he dropped back into fifth place in that uh, final round three. Big Trevor Robinson, he's won one of the motors on the right-hand side. Tony Slater, that's the chap who just got in in the first group. And let's hope he can get off that gate somewhat better because uh, he's been failing to make good starts and he needs amongst this crowd not to miss a trick. Jamie Vince on the extreme right-hand side there uh, with Union Jack on the top of his helmet. Very clear to pick out in the red and yellow strip and the Union Jack. And uh, confident now following that race over in uh, Canada with his fourth place in the Pro Cruiser. Can he do it this time and can he get off the line first? They're thundering now down that straight. It's Trev Robinson has opened up a good lead, but he's gone wide and he's allowed Jamie Vince to come on the inside and guess who's on the outside? Oh, look at that move by Middleton. Middleton came through where I thought nobody could go, but Jamie Vince is still holding him off at the front place, but Middleton's trying to come on the inside. In the white and the blue, it's Middleton in second place and guess who'd have swung in sharp too? That's number four on the extreme right-hand side, but he's now going to take the tight right-hander and it's in the lead still. Jamie Vince in the yellow, rocketing in towards the line now. That was a great ride by Jamie Vince and guess who'd have did in fact manage to make second place or did he? Because I see Anthony Saul came thundering through as well. Those riders in that last turn were really jostling for positions and the crowd had to wait for the official verdict because it was so fast. They all went across the line so close behind Jamie Vince and there's the official result. Well, guess should have did get second, Pete Middleton third, Anthony Saul in fourth place and Trevor Robinson who started off by leading down the opening straight had to drop back into fifth. Andy Ruffle only made sixth. Tony Slater, who slipped a pedal at the start, made seventh, and Frankie Romain was back in eighth place. So these lads are going to watch some very quick action as we move on to the second of the mains. And remember the 15, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 and 5 points at stake, and that on the extreme left there, Frankie Romain is the chap who only scored five last time round. Andy Ruffle didn't do so well either, because he only scored seven points. Trevor Robinson in the middle there scored eighth with his uh, fifth place. And that is Pete Middleton, who's really tanking that very bright bike he's got. It's all been painted specially for this series, uh, and a very bright red, burning and searing the eyeballs, as the riders down on the extreme right-hand side have got a good position. That's uh, Jamie Vince waving to us, happy with that first place. Guess Shooter has got the best position, though, on the right-hand side of the gate, and over on the extreme left-hand side of the gate, Frankie Romain. Who's going to get the sharp left-hander first? Off the gate they go! Well, Vince has made a very good start yet again, but uh, it's Guest Shooter on the inside, sweeping round there. And Jamie Vince has dropped back into third place. Andy Ruffle now is into second. And he's 
following him now, like Batman and Boy Robin. He got in the wheel tracks of Guest Shooter, and he's waiting for him to swing out. He's trotting on the inside is Andy Ruffle, but there's no chance now. Can he get round the outside? Bump, bump, bump over the triple whoops. That hasn't disturbed the rhythm. At the back, they're dabbing feet, though. As Vince, the winner of the first motor, is back in third. There's no problem this time across the line. Oh, oh I think that uh, Vince, in fact, uh, just got third from uh, Saul. They lunged across the line, and uh, the first two home. Good result for Guest Shooter and uh, Andy Saul in third place, I think. But there's a bit of trouble at the moment. There's objections going on. Well, 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 we're going to have to wait for the result. The judges now are conferring because they're disputing where they were put. And there's Jamie Vinging saying no, that he was not in fourth, he was third. And that's the chief referee, Bernard Williams, on the right-hand side. And there's Anthony Sewell walking away. Well, we saw him rush across the line, and for my money, I certainly thought that Jamie Vince was in third place, not fourth. He looks very upset with that one. And there is Bernard Williams. I don't know what he's got to say. That's the chief referee. He's walking across to the finish line now to talk to the finish line judges. They're on both sides, and they call out the finish. And he's walking away. But Andy Ruffler has asked to see the video because we're going to rerun this so that the lads can have a look. There's Matt Clark on the left, Andy Ruffler in the centre, and City Salisbury on the right. And here comes the action replay and a chance to ask uh, the referee to have a look as well. I don't like the idea of using video. There's men that are doing what they think is... It's a difficult job. Judging finishing is a difficult job. The minute you start overturning their decision, they may as well walk off. Put a camera there. We can't find a satisfactory camera because the focal length changes over that much of a distance. You get overlying of the wheels and it misrepresents the finishing order. Now, if the gap is enormous, then you've got some logic on your side. I've got to risk upsetting the system, which I'm no dis I have no decide I will do. I will look at the video, and if the result is extremely conclusive, then I'll overturn the finish line decision judging. And this is the picture that Bernard Williams is looking at. Andy Ruffle, clearly across the line in second place, and behind him, half hidden, is Jamie Vince. Alongside him on the left-hand side of the picture there, number 14, Anthony Sewell. Did he make third or fourth? It was certainly back here. It was certainly to one side, and I'm not prepared to take a decision on whether that camera was in the right place or not. So the results now. So despite the protests, Jamie Vince is given fourth, Anthony Sewell is given third place. Guest shooter on the extreme left there has 15 points from that uh, motor, and that makes his total 27. Anthony Sewell in the yellow strip there, he has 19 points now, following his third place. Trevor Robinson on the right-hand side has a total of 16 points to date, and he's got to go some to win that car. Whereas Jamie Vince has 24 points. He's lying second behind Guest Shooter, who has 27 in total. Andy Ruffle is pretty well out of the hunt at the moment. He has 19 points. He's equal with uh, Anthony Sewell, and those two are third equal. On the extreme right there, and that's Tony Slater. He's not in the hunt either. He's only 11 points. So this is the third and final charge down the line, and it's all between guest shooter, Jamie Vince, Andy Ruffle, and Anthony Saul. Who's going to get this one then? And in the centre, Jamie Vince is looking good, but no, it's Andy Ruffle that's stolen the whole shot. Ruffle's leading at the moment, guest shooter's alongside him. Oh, Vince has got through. Vince has got a second place now, and he's heading shooter, who's dropped back to third, but Ruffle is going to win this one if he stays upright. That's a good ride by Vince, has gone to second. And Shooter's coming back into third now, challenging, he's got to get up there, he's got to beat Vince to get this car. And they come down a finishing straight now, heading towards that line. It's still Andy Ruffle in the lead, and thundering across there. Oh, it looks like Vince got second, and I think Saul went past Shooter. Now that will really put the cat amongst the pigeons, because that could really take Shooter out of the reckoning now. They're adding up the points, they're slapping each other on the back. And we now have confirmation then of the mains race three. Andy Ruffle first, Jamie Vince second, Anthony Saul third. We couldn't see him in that scrum of spectators. And Guest Shooter surprisingly back in fourth place. So who's going to collect the prize of the car? Well, before we get to that, here are the little lads collecting their trophies from the Nottingham Evening Post and also from sister radios. A good haul today for these competitors, some 560 that have been taking part in their races during the afternoon. Well, it's given the judges an opportunity as well to sort out the scores. And there we have it, Jamie Vince and Guest Shooter both have 36 points. Now, because Vince finished second in the final of the three mains, he will get the car. 
Well, leading overall in the Screensport 1985 Pro Series is Andy Ruffle, because we've totted up the points they've scored today and added them up to the other four rounds so far. And there, Andy has now moved one point ahead of Geth Shooter. Andy Soule in uh, third place with 134 points. Rules the fact he never scored at Norton Keynes when he didn't make his way into the final. Here we are in Morecambe then for the final round in the Screensport 1985 Pro Series. So far the arrives have been out at Coxmoors, Norton Keynes, Milton Keynes, two at uh, Nottingham and back up here for the final event. And there's quite a close foot competition going on. And the third place man overall, Anthony Sewell, has had three second places and a fourth at Nottingham. He failed to score at Norton Keynes when he crashed, and today really he's got to rake revenge on the rest, because above him we've got some pretty hard contestants. The man who's in second place overall, the chap called Geth Shooter. He burst upon the scene last year, the professional rider, who has now really set amongst topping the heads. Going straight in to become British champion, he's now in there in second place in the Screen Sport Championships. Can he win today? Well, this man will be out to stop him, because Andy Ruffle likes to be number one. For three years, he was number one as he went up through the age groups in uh, BMX racing. And then last year, as a superclass rider, he took a number two plate behind Tim Marsh. But now he's leading the Screen Sport Series and he wants to stay on top. But he's only got one slender point separating him from Geth Shooter. So that's very tight for those two. We're watching each other like hawks today. Now, that's not the Queen Mary that's been moored here at Morecambe. That, in fact, is the theatre. And uh, later on, after the events are all over and done with, the presentations will take place for the lads taking part in the Pontins weekend of BMX and also to the winners of the 1985 Screen Sport Pro Series. John Higginson, the local man, knows his track extremely well, but so far hasn't been able to use that knowledge to an advantage and I don't think he's going to get through unless he can finish in first or second place this time. Ah, oh, there's Guy Llewellyn pulling down his pants. He's unzipped them at the back and just to cool off his legs. It's quite a warm, sunny day here, despite the fact it's October. We're having some of the best weather we've had all summer long. The rest of the riders want to get the racing underway, psychologically get themselves tuned up, and Shooter looking across to see where the opposition is. Llewellyn is certainly a man they've got to watch out for today. On the extreme left then, Pat Robinson, poised, waiting and ready for the starter's call. And the marshals out there with the yellow tabards on, their job to watch the action all the way around because the close infight that goes on, everybody has to be careful that there's no fouling in this racing, but at the high speeds these lads go through, you can't afford to hook somebody because that can be very dangerous indeed at the speed because this surface here today with the sun baking down is just like concrete. They're starting on a concrete ramp, then they hit the dusty start uh, straight and from then on it's eyeballs out. Who's going to get that effective hole shot? Oh, now, there's a little bit of trouble there on that gate because a lot of sand has been brought up from the bottom of the track and they're sweeping it away now because if you don't get that sand away from the back wheel and shove the pedal down hard, it will skid and then you'll lose those vital fuel lengths off the start hill. So, back again. That's very unnerving for the rest of the competitors, equally as much as it is for the man that's got the problem. Time, lads. Off the gate they go, nobody slipped the back wheel, they're all lying across the track. And Gaylor well in the centre of that one, hooks into Trevor Robinson, slows him down. And it's between Llewellyn and uh, Anthony Saul, but Saul, I think he's going to get over the top, yes he has. And oh my goodness, nearly there, it was so close for Llewellyn as he ran in towards the back of uh, Saul. He stopped pedalling and his front wheel ran into the back wheel, but they both stayed upright. Round that tricky left-hander, the order then, as they go down that straight. It's the winner. Oh, somebody upended again. Well, at the back, that's curtains for some rider. We saw him go down, but at the front then, Llewellyn, Shooter and Saul are hammering down the way towards the finish. And at the back, I think it was Neil Trevor that fell off, but no doubt about it at the front then, that was uh, a win for Anthony Saul. And in second place, looked like Gary Llewellyn. We'll wait for the official result from the judges. An interest there to see who's got through into the final. Yes, Anthony Saul first, Gary Llewellyn second, Guest Shooter third, and, oh my goodness, there was Trevor Robinson and Pat Robinson fourth and sixth. They did that in the previous moto, and the first one, they were fifth and sixth. Those two really have been going around like Batman and Boy Robin. We're moving on to uh, Group uh, B for their third moto. 
Tim Marsh and Andy Ruffle, though, here at Pontin's uh, holiday camp, uh, could take a holiday from this one almost, because they've had first and second uh, twice on the trot now, whereas the battle is between Tony Holland and uh, Mark White uh, for who goes through into the final. There's big Tim on the left-hand side. Ian Dixon hasn't got a chance now of getting through into the final. He's way down the point score. That's the chap on the right-hand side. And that's Mark White, then, who's got to finish around about third in this moto to move through into the final. He had a third place in the previous moto and a sixth place in the first one. At the extreme left, Jamie Vince can't allow himself to slip too far back either. He's got to stop in the top uh, half dozen. So there's a lot to go for this time. Tim Marsh and Andy Ruffle then are fairly happy to go through, providing they don't fall off. And it's Tony Holland, uh, Jamie Vince and Mark White that we've got to watch out for, battling for those vital third, fourth and fifth places. Tony Holland on the extreme right-hand side of the gate in the talker strip. Mark White near that gap on the left-hand side. Jamie Vince on the far left-hand side. Those are three to watch for. There they go. And Tim Marsh has made an extremely good start again. Is he going to triple this one? Because he's had two wins so far. This looks like he's heading for his third uh, moto win. That'll take him through the final. And yet again, that's Andy Ruffle going to second place. Well, these two lying first and second. They're very good at this. And that means they'll go through into the final. But let's look at the back then for the battle. And Mark White's going to third place. White's going to third place. And Holland's after him. Holland knows he's got to get up alongside him. And Jamie Minch is behind them too. Jamie can't afford to fall. He's got to stay upright and right into the finish now. As forgetting those two in the front, it's the three four and fifth place behind we've got to watch out for there's Mark White stabbing a foot down he's lost momentum and Holland's after him and Vince down the finishing straight there's Marsh there's Ruffle who's going to take third and fourth well 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 I would not like to split that one up that was so close the judges have got to go down and decide that one and tell them who was third and fourth and they're going to wait anxiously for that result then they really rode their hearts out down that finishing straight did Mark White and uh, Tony Holland. And the crowd here now are also anxiously awaiting because there's a lot of local support for Tony Holland. Has he made it on his first ride? Yes, he has. Tony Holland got third. That was oh so close. And I don't think Mark White's going to be very happy at all to be pushed back into fourth place because he'd like to get amongst the cash. But Tony Holland's made it for the first time as a pro in amongst the cash. Into the mains goes the bold lad from the talker squad. There's the lineup for the mains. Three mains to be contested this afternoon. Anthony Sewell, Trevor Robinson, Jamie Vince, Gary Llewellyn, Andy Ruffle, Tony Holland, Tim Marsh and Guest Shooter. They'll be riding for 15 points for first place, 12 for second, 10 for third and so on down the line. On the extreme right hand side there, Andy Ruffle is leading with 159 points overall. And uh, in the lineup there, Gary Llewellyn and Tony Holland have not scored so far in this series because they're new pros up there on the starter for the first time. Guest Shooter is the man who's hammering after Andy. He's got 158 points, one point behind Andy Ruffle. And with his head down there, Anthony Sewell is in third place with 134 points. Well, he's got a lot of work to do to uh, get into first place overall, but we've already seen uh, this afternoon that if a rider has the misfortune to crash, then he can go from first to last place before he can say Jack Robinson, and that means losing a lot of valuable points. And there they are, up on the gate for this first of the mains. The starter is ready, signalling now that the track is clear ahead of him. Wants to make a very good start first time round. Jamie Vince isn't quite ready, though. There he is now, he's up. Just getting himself nice and comfy on the extreme right-hand side, Andy Ruffle. On the extreme left-hand side, Tim Marsh. These two old arch enemies of BMX then. And off the dark gate they go and down that first straight. On the far side, Marsh is making a good start. And so is Trevor Robinson. But it's Gary Llewellyn, I think he's coming into the lead now. No, Trevor Robinson. No, they changed places yet again. That was a good bit of riding by Llewellyn, who kept the pressure on all the way. I thought uh, Trevor was going to take it into that sharp left-hander. But it's Gary Llewellyn that's leading him through. This new pro, hot on the scene. Well, he took three firsts on the trot when he's down there in Lowestoft. And right at the back is another young pro, suddenly learning his lessons the hard way. Tony Holland just couldn't stay the pace. He's dropped back overall. And something else has come on too. It looks like Jamie Vince has gone down. So Tony Holland isn't going to be last. But at the front, it's Gary Llewellyn being first for the first time in the Screen Sport Series. We're a very disconsolate Jamie Vince has now got up from that sharp right-hander where he came off. He doesn't look too badly hurt. The St John Ambulance people have handed him back his bicycle and he's got to now go the lone ride down into the uh, finish box to collect his points of being eighth. And a bit of mechanicing before he sets off. 
Well, he isn't hurt, but he's just shaking his head, and Jamie, who won that Skoda car at Nottingham, won't be happy with his eighth place uh, in that first of the main. So let's go now and just check the overall results of the first one, because that really significant ride by Gary Llewellyn puts him in there with 15 points, first time out on the track. That's an extremely good start for this uh, man, and that proves that he's got something to show the rest of these riders, that he's got a clean pair of wheels. Tim Marsh in second place, Anthony Sewell third, but look there in fifth and sixth. That's Andy Ruffle and Guest Shooter, still stuck together, so still that one point separating those two now, and Andrew has helped himself to another one uh, to take him forward now with uh, a couple of points ahead of Guest Shooter. The battle is still on. This is the second of the mains. Now, can anybody get past that man, Llewellyn? Off the gate they go now, and they're all across the track yet again, shoulder to shoulder, as they head over that first little tiny speed jump on the inside, it's Guest Shooter. Oh, he's hooked himself! He's hooked himself right underneath uh, Gary Llewellyn, and they've gone down, crash, bang, wallop. The first day rushing to their attention, leaving Tim Marsh in the lead. Marsh has got a good lead now. He's going to win two on the track. Oh, he's got as well! His feet have come off the pedal, and Marsh has done a superb end, though. He hasn't hurt himself, but he's now way back there. And he has no chance of getting up to those two leaders as Anthony Sewell and Andy Ruffles set off into distance. And nobody's going to get amongst these two now. That really was a turn-up for the books as Marsh on the far side of the track has got himself way back in something like seventh place, sixth place I think it was. But these two, first and second over the line, have... Uh, taken the top uh, scores and the major points and that will upset guest shooter he needed to be with Andy Ruffle and now he's going to be right at the back of this race and that's going to put him out the reckoning for sure and race announcer there Tony Huffman stopping him as he goes through to uh, have a few words with him for the benefit of the crowd who are hoping that perhaps Geth could have come through and challenged Andy Ruffle. And there, the new rookie pro, after the win in the first of the mains now, has had to push his bike in. And bad luck to Guest Shooter, uh, because he was really keen to try and topple Andy from the top slot. So we'll have to check now to see what the results were overall, because there are the point scores. Andy Ruffle taking uh, 12 points for his second place, and Guest Shooter right back was given eighth place, giving him only five points. So that really has split it. And at this rate, there's no way that Guest Shooter can topple Andy Ruffle from being the Screen Sport 1985 Pro Series uh, champion winner. Well, Guest, you seem to have wiped out your chances there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all down to this last race, really, but I've blown it now. So. Well, the crowd look happy with the day's racing, although some disappointment in there for the Guest Shooter Supporter Club, uh, who did want to see their man in his first year as a pro come out on top. This man has been on top for a long time as a pro. He's now acknowledging the applause of the crowd because Anthony Sewell has been twice uh, a number one plate holder in the American series. He's been racing now for some 12 years, seven of them as a professional, and all the way over from California, enjoying the sunshine, as is Andy Ruffle. Andy then who last year was uh, second place behind Tim Marsh. Now, looks like he's going to topple the bowl, Tim, who hasn't scored enough points in the Screen Sport Series to worry Andy. This man riding for the first time, too, Tony Holland, uh, is only in here now for the cash today, and I'm sure he's going to be pleased to be taking home some uh, checks because this is the first time he's ridden amongst the cash ranks, and first time out, it's good to take home the lolly. Uh, Tim Marsh waving to the crowd. We just had the right-hand side, Jamie Vince, who won that lovely car down at Nottingham, and Tim Marsh who's really out to try and win today's racing, but that misfortune, that crash, has taken him out of the opportunity of collecting the maximum points. Guest Shooter also crashed, as did uh, Gary Llewellyn. So we've got three together here who seem to have had difficulty staying upright. And so that's eliminated them, really, from any chance of winning today's racing. Trevor uh, Robinson, big, strong Trevor, he usually stays out of trouble. In fact, he's so solid, if anybody hits him, they usually bounce off. They call him Mr. Muscles because he trains with weights and he's very strong and very fit and very fast indeed. So Big Trev, perhaps it's a chance for him to win the final event of the series. So they'd all like that glory, that honour, to take the final main in the uh, Pro Screen Sport Series 1985. The officials there on the track now clearing the way and making sure that all the spectators can get a very good view of this final event. A lot of... Uh, Scores to be settled out there still because uh, Anthony Sewell would like to win this one and run out uh, as winner of the final series. Andy Ruffle has got to stay upright and get in the top three places. If he falls off, of course, and uh, Guest Shooter wins, then the thing could change course, but that is not the way that Andy rides. He's smooth, he's fast, he's quick, but he's getting boxed. Andy Ruffle's been boxed in the middle there, and looks like Anthony Sewell cut in front of him, but Andy stayed out of trouble. Oh, no! Oh, Gary Llewellyn's gone! That's very unfortunate for Gary. He's looped the loop now, and again, the St John people had to go to him and he's lying out on the track while streaming away at the front is Guest Shooter. 
who had a crash in the last uh, of the mains, is now showing that he could have been in there as the overall winner if only he hadn't have fallen off, because he clashed with Llewellyn in the second of the mains, and now he stayed out of harm's way, and he's up there in the front, and he can see the finish line, his guest should have powering on down towards that finish, being chased home by Anthony Saul, looking over his shoulder, should have takes first place, Saul was in second, and uh, I think way back there in third place, or was it fourth was Andy Ruffles, so he looks like he's probably got enough points to get the championship. But no more points then for Gary Llewellyn. He really has hurt his foot. He's looked like he's done some harm there. They've taken his uh, shoe off. And Gary now is going to be lifted onto that stretcher. He certainly can't walk. But let's go back to the official result. Guess shooter first. Anthony Saul in second place. Jamie Vince in third. And Gary Llewellyn back in eighth place. Collected five points. And quick check at the points. That means today he's finished overall in 13th place in the series. So bad luck for Gary. 13th overall on his first outing on the Screen Sports Series. But for Andy Saul, that second place was enough to give him 37 points to win on the day. With Andy Ruffle back in second with 29 points and Guess Shooter third with 27 points. Anthony, congratulations. Overall winner on the day. Thank you. Ah, that last moto was pretty tough. You had to win it. Yes, it was. It was a good thing for a good position and um, a little luck of the draw. And there are the points that Andy collected to win this prestigious title, 188 in all. He was three points ahead of Guess Shooter who took second place. Andy Nisour was in third with 171 points, and consistent Trevor Robinson collected 156 points to finish in fourth place. BMXers, see you next time.